Hey everybody, it's the Mad Master here. I'm doing a video today about the recent news that Hansi Kirsch has left Demons and Wizards, which is his band with John Schaefer, um, which uh, has been in existence for about 20 years or more, actually. So here are my thoughts about what's going on with that. Um, I've never been a huge fan of Demons and Wizards. I like... I thought the second album was kind of cool. Uh, the first album was pretty good. Third album, I bought, and I wasn't really a huge fan of it. But I thought it was okay. It's like a lot of Latter-day Iced Earth or even Ice, or even Blind Guardian. Um, I wasn't as keen on it as their more uh, intense years, honestly. Like, uh, just, just my pure honesty here i'm not trying to you know bash anybody or anybody's musical tastes like uh certain japanese bands uh that i <laughs> did videos about recently i just uh didn't like the last demons and wizards that much but um i didn't listen to it that much to be fair and obviously i i'm gonna be actually doing a video about my blind guardian uh rankings pretty soon i did it earlier but that hard drive crashed and i wasn't able to attain the uh, the actual video in time. It was you know, one of the only things that I'm missing from that hard drive. But I'll be redoing it anyways. I think I could do a better job, more advanced uh, video about that. So Hansi Kirsch didn't. I don't. I didn't really read his full statement. I just saw this on Blabbermouth. Um, but what I think about it is that well, him and John Schaefer have been friends for about thirty years or more. Uh, they toured together in the early 90s, Ice Earth and Blind Guardian, and I think it's kind of sad because, you know, you can have disagreements with your friends and not, you know, not necessarily agree with what they, what they believe in. Uh, that said, I understand, you know, from his point of, from Hansi Kirsch's point of view that you know, you can't exactly uh, be associated with someone like that at this point in time because of the public perception. You know, many of his fans will probably not support him, and that's his livelihood as Blind Guardian. So it's an understandable situation. It's a hard situation to be in, regardless of uh, Heinz Kirsch's political points of view. And he's a German, so, I mean, I don't know. You know, I, I tend to think that he's probably, you know, kind of a moderator or something like that. I know he's, a you know... It doesn't really matter, you know. Blind Guardian really doesn't have a lot of political lyrics. Um, Battalions of Fear, particularly, is a, it's kind of a political song, and uh, a couple songs on Imaginations from the Other Side. And what was that? Like one song off of... Uh, uh, one song off of Night at the Opera kind of had some political leanings, and so... And, you know, like, I, I, I used to have a lot of arguments with people about metal and politics, and I'm like, well, metal can be political, it doesn't matter, I mean, it's, it, there's nothing wrong with political lyrics or, you know, opinions, and metal, regardless of what, you know, where, what side you're on, so I had a lot of arguments with people in the past about that, a blind guardian really does not need to be a political band, as it is, it's a fantasy band, you know, they talk about uh, role-playing stuff, and like, dragons and fucking nerdy kind of shit you know science fiction whatever so ice earth were kind of like that too but they you know dipped into a couple of political things over the years and i think that's partly because of his john schaefer's uh something wicked trilogy kind of touched upon some conspiracy ideas and i think probably in doing research for that that's part of the reason part of where he got the uh ideas for his political uh awakening quote unquote so i think it's sad i think hopefully you know maybe he uh john schaefer can redeem himself in the public side public eyes sometime i don't know i don't know how long he's going to go to prison i don't know how long these uh, capital protesters are going to go to prison um you know obviously demons and wizards are no longer a thing, even though they've been a thing for you know, over 20 years themselves. Um, but it is a sad moment in, you know, metal 
Um, not that it's a big deal because, you know, there weren't a huge band or, you know, that much of a, I dare say important band. They were kind of just a side project of two bigger bands. But um, essentially, I think uh, Iced Earth is no more as well. Uh, which I wouldn't be surprised if the members of Iced Earth uh, form a different band with a different uh, rhythm guitarist and leader, you know, as far as songwriting goes. That, that would be probably the move that I would see happening soon. So, what I mean, what do I think that John Schaefer can do to, you know, redeem himself? Well, you know, like a lot of people, public figures, they have to do go through a lot of a huge process and long term, uh, long term process to redeem themselves or get any kind of credibility back with people. Now, I don't see that. That's the thing. I'm I'm a little more neutral on him because I don't. Because my own political beliefs don't lean towards his, but I have a empathy for people in this current time where they're, you know, conf you know, being misguided and confused by certain demagogues and so forth because of all the fucked up shit that's happening. So that doesn't mean I support violence or anything like that. I just, you know, I try to understand people's motivations and I'm not like, a, I'm not like against the everything that he says but of course i i what my major problem happens is that he thinks that that movement was any kind of serious insurrection and not just a joke that for a guy that's not really anything more than a you know maybe a psyop himself you know <laughs> or QAnon is a definitely a psyop of some sort or something like that. So that's what I think about that. So not a huge John Schaefer fan, but I'm not, a, you know, but I do like Iced Earth. Um, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not, but I'm not a detractor either. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm going to burn my Iced Earth collection now because uh, he, he participated in the Capitol protest. Oh, my God. Uh, you know. No more than I'm going to burn this iPhone because it may have been made by slaves or that my tax dollars go to go to drone strikes that kill children. Then my car contributes to pollution and kills 4 million people a year. See, see my, you know, see where, where we're going with this. It's a slippery slope. So I don't support any active Nazi bands or anything like that, you know, as far as music goes. I mean, but, you know, I have, I have bought albums by people that are probably as pretty much associated with that scene, including uh, Mr. Uh, Varg, because his, uh, but his albums are so mainstream. I think they're on every platform available, pretty much. I don't think they're banned from Spotify, Burzum albums. Um, I did, and, you know, a lot of those albums were made before he actually even was associated with much of that. He was just associated with the uh, black metal scene in Norway, which ostensibly had some connections to the white supremacists, but really more was more about shock value, much like a lot of the original punk scene. You know, they, I have a poster in my house that has John Lydon with a swastika. I didn't even notice it until I looked close at the picture because it's this collage of uh, pictures of this, you know, this, this poster. So it's like, well, you know, a lot of people were into shock value and stuff, but you know, Mark Vikernis obviously had some very problematic opinions, but he's pretty mainstream. I mean, they have him in, I think he's in like a couple of movies too, his music. So, but that's, uh, that's the extent of me buying any kind of white supremacist uh, material as far as metal goes. Um, I think I bought a Nocturnal Mortem album too, but whatever. That was being sold at the local shop, which won't sell, or I think they're closed now. That won't wouldn't sell uh, any kind of Nazi stuff, but they had Nocturnal Mortem. <laughs> so, but you know, they didn't really have a lot of lyrics like that. So, but do I think? I mean, that's the problem with a lot of this stuff is being associated. The far right is being associated all the time with white nationalism and stuff. I don't think uh, John Schaefer was a white nationalist at all. Um, I don't think his motivations with joining that movement were anything that was that much more than just like libertarian conspiracy culture. 
you know, believing that the government's going to be being taken over by technocrats and, you know, going to be, uh, going to be on all slaves, you know, chipped, microchipped or whatever for the, the elite or whatever, who knows, but that's kind of the extent of his, but I, you know, I sympathize with that because even though it might be seen as crazy, I understand where one could, would, could, would draw that conclusion, especially with the events of the past year or so. I mean, think about it. We got unprecedented government power that we've never had in the United States and the world. I mean, most free democracies, quote unquote, which is not really a democracy, um, usually. It's been unprecedented as far as what, how much power the gov government has attained, regardless of whether or not you believe that power is legitimate or not for the virus. You know, it's just, it's crazy. So nobody can really dispute that. So I can see a libertarian conspiracy theorist who's, you know, gone down that rabbit hole like John Schaefer has in the last 15 years or so, latching onto that. The one thing I would say is that I don't understand is how people latch onto Trump because I don't, just like the, all the QAnon stuff that never came true, you know. Uh, I would, you know, it, I don't see him as like, I don't see Trump as the, uh, savior of liberty. Now there are certain things that Trump did stand for that aren't as bad in certain ways as some other, you know, a, a lot of people wanted to paint him as like the antichrist and the worst thing ever, worst president, but some of the things he stood for like the populist, some of the populist stuff, I I do identify with, but I don't think he was a true populist. That's the problem. Um, he was in it for himself, and he he you know he gave a lot of power to the establishment under the guise of being anti-establishment. That was my whole problem with Trump. Um, how Biden's just openly establishment, and you know that's just the way it is. <laughs> I mean, look at uh, Janet Yellen's recent stuff, recent statements. I think she said some statements about GameStop as far as the GameStop thing, which I fully support. Um, I fully support infiltrating Wall Street like we're doing, quote unquote, Occupy Wall Street Part 2, you know, almost Occupy Wall Street Part 2, but a different kind of Occupy Wall Street because you can't meet in person because you've spread the virus outside. Yeah, sure. Um, well, it's cold outside in New York City, so I don't think you can really... Protests wouldn't be very fun anyways, so. <laughs> but um, I believe in infiltrate Wall Street. And I'm actually going to probably try to buy some stocks and stuff in with regards to this movement. I bought some Dogecoin. I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that. I'm not going to give my disclaimer. But I just support the movement in general. I'm going to try to support it. It's funny because I, uh, about 10 years ago, I supported the, uh, bring down Goldman Sachs day, which was, uh, you bought, it was like, it was Max Kaiser or one of those guys, Gerald Salente, one of those guys, one of these Alex Jones guests frequent out back then, you know, he, when he had a lot of these kinds of guys, um, I bought a piece of silver, which I still have because I was like, buy a silver crash Goldman Sachs. So I guess silver is supposed to be going up too. So who knows? if it's a thousand dollars, that'd be great. You know, I can buy some more stuff, but, um, <laughs> So anyways, I'm just babbling, but that's all. <laughs>